Hey, what's up? MKBHD here, and these are Samsung's new 2022 flagship smartphones. And I'm saying it's these and not the Ultra just because these will probably sell more volume, and these are the phones more people will experience. And I do have some thoughts for my first hands-on with them. So the running theme I think you'll notice here is uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they didn't. They really did not change a whole lot about these. There's a lot that's similar, they played it safe. But one of the biggest differences, one of the most noticeable differences to me when I actually got to hold it and feel it in the hand is something that most people who buy it probably won't care about that much because everyone puts a case on their phone, and that's the build quality. So I have a video on the S22 Ultra dropping at the exact same time as this one. It'll be linked below if you want to watch that. It's basically a Galaxy Note. But these phones are a small update in every department from the S21 series across the board. And like I said, holding it in the hand for the first time, the first thing I noticed is it's a bit more boxy, a little more square on the sides, a little more flat on the top and the bottom, and just slightly tighter corner radii all the way around. And the display is already flat on the front, so it just feels a bit sharper overall. And then on top of that, the back is real glass this year instead of plastic like the S21. Again, not a huge deal for most people just putting a case on their phone, but that is a step up, in my opinion, from the S21 and the S21 FE. And it adds a little bit of weight too. It's some density, some heft, to the feel of the phone. Everything else on the outside though, mostly the same design. Same center camera cutout that I liked so much, same speaker and button placement, same fingerprint reader placement, still IP68 rated. And at the front, you're looking at essentially the same display as last year, but slightly better and slightly smaller. So, still two different sizes, of course. The S22 Plus is 6.6 .6 inches. And this might sound weird to say, but because of how small the bezels are, the S22 at 6.1 inches feels kind of compact. Now I'm doing air quotes, like this isn't, this clearly isn't a small phone, but the new boxier shape and then just the way it feels with the smaller bezels and the tighter corners, it's it has a nice density to it, just feels like a good compact sort of phone. The update with this display though is it is now a much more variable refresh rate than last year. So instead of just being 60 or 120 hertz, this goes from 10 all the way up to 120 hertz. Now, interestingly, I'm told from Samsung, it is still not LTPO. That's for the S22 Ultra only. So we'll see if this new display is any more efficient or not. This is of course just the first look though. It's not the full review. So we'll have to see if that pans out as I actually get to use the phone. By the way, if you enjoy these quick first looks, these short first impressions videos, then there's a really good chance you'll enjoy this video's sponsor, Morning Brew. So of course, I'm trying to keep you all up to date with these videos, but Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter that gets delivered right to your inbox that keeps you up to speed on the tech and finance and business world in a quick five minute read. So you'll for sure hear about new phones like this getting announced on Morning Brew, but you'll also hear about the company behind it and the dynamics of the competition and all the other biggest stories in the industry for sure. And it's not the normal like boring, dry news language. It's actually pretty funny and witty and informative at the same time. So if you're interested in business, finance, or tech like I am, it's completely free and it takes 15 seconds to subscribe. You can go to morningbrew.com slash mkbhd and then you're in there. So okay, S22 and S22 Plus are clearly pretty similar to the S21s from last year. A little bit smaller and boxier, but generally the same form factors with a spec bump so the new specs are a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or a new four nanometer Exynos chip in some regions. And all specs have eight gigs of RAM with either 128 or 256 gigs of storage again. That's it. And then the new cameras are also a spec bump. There's a new triple camera layout, 50 megapixel main camera, that's probably binning to 12 and a half megapixels, then an ultra wide and a 3X telephoto camera. The big change is that the high resolution camera is the main camera, not the telephoto. So you might remember last year when shooting 8K video, you had to crop into the telephoto. This time, if you're shooting 8K video, it can use the main camera, which is gonna have that wider normal field of view. Smaller detail for some, but that's a big improvement for me. Then the other one thing to note is since the phones did get a bit smaller, the batteries also did get smaller from last year. The plus goes from 4,800 to 4,500 milliamp hours, and the S22 goes from 4,000 to 3,700 milliamp hours. That's really interesting. I mean, the camera bumps aren't noticeably bigger. I don't know if the glass is much thicker than the plastic used to be, so I'm not really sure of the reason, but whatever it is, 
you know, an 8% smaller battery, something like that, is something to keep an eye on for sure. Even if the display is a bit more efficient, we'll have to test that. But that's it as far as spec upgrades from last year. Like I said, not a super long list, but if you're interested in these phones, what you really wanna know is the difference between the S22 and S22 Plus. So here is the entire official list. First of all, they're different size phones, so the same resolution display, 1080p, but of course a 6.6 .6 inch larger one on the S22 Plus. And then the Plus supports a faster 45 watt charging, while the S22 only supports 25 watts. No charger in the box for either of them, but that's good to know. And the Plus has ultra wideband and Wi-Fi 6E support, while the S22 doesn't, just has normal Wi-Fi 6. And then larger battery in the bigger phone, 4,500 milliamp hours over 3,700. S22 Plus, 9.99. S22, 7.99. So yeah, let me know what you wanna see in a full review of these phones once I actually get more than an hour to play with them. I think One UI 4.1 is one of the interesting things about this phone. Obviously I saw there's a new messages app, a default that appears to look just like the Google messages app. I wanna look more into that. But if you have questions about the battery life, that could be a concern, the displays, let me know in the comments section. I'll hang out there. That'll inform the full review. Get subscribed to see it. Make sure you hit that red button if you haven't already. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.